So here comes the main hero of our movie. So in this video, we are going to talk about LTE PC network architecture. In some previous videos, we have talk about, talked about 2G and 3G network architecture. And we are going to quickly review that before we jump on to the LTE PC network architecture. Let's have a look at this picture. In this picture, we are going to talk about 2G and 3G network architecture and outline some major differences in 4G network. So if you look at it, in 2, 3G network, we had two components which are referred as node B and RNC. So how typically they work, whenever node B have some requests coming in from the UE, it has to take permissions from the radio network controller. However, that adds to the latency of the network. So in 4G, we want to reduce that latency further and to minimize that, what we have done is we have combined the functionality of node B and RNC. And this combined functionality is referred as E node B, E vol node B. So instead of having two components like node B and RNC, we have only one component called as E vol node B. So we don't have a separated network function in the radio access network. When it comes to the circuit core network, there is absolutely no circuit core network in the 4G network. So functionality like MSC and GMSC will not play any important role in the 4G network architecture. We have moved to a complete packet core network and that's where we have components like SGSN and GGSN. So what we did here is we have done some separation in HGSN based on the control plane and user plane and we have divided HGSN functionality into two parts where one functionality is referred as MME, also called as mobility management entity, which is typically taking care of the control plane part of it. And another function called as SGW or serving gateway, and that typically takes care of the user plane part of it. The GGSN here stays as it is, and typically this functionality is now named as PGW or PDN gateway. The HLR moved, uh, moves away from the register kind of architecture and getting into the server kind of architecture and that's why we refer this as HSS, Home Subscriber Server. We also have some additional functions called as PCRF, which typically takes care of the quality of service policies as well as charging procedures. So these are the new blocks here and we are able to see all these blocks in this new picture. So if you look at this picture, instead of BTS, node B and RNC, we have one single node that is referred as E node B or ENB. E node Bs are typically connected via an interface called as X2 interface. X2 interface is not an option, not a mandatory interface, it's a, it is an optional interface. In further videos, we will talk a bit more about X2 interface. The MME typically takes care of the control plane part of it. The HEW typically takes care of user plane part of it towards the radio network and they are typically connected via S1 interface referred as S1 MME for MME and S1U for user plane. In, instead of S1 MME, in some of the documents you will also see interface name like S1C. MME controls HEW via an interface called as S11 MME also interfaces with HSS, Home Subscriber Server, for variety of procedures related to user and it also connects to another MME by using S10 interface and these S, this S10 interface typically come, helps MMEs to know each other and communicate with each other for the user context. SGW connects to PGW, PDN Gateway and PD, PGW connects you to external data network. PGW also connects to PCRF for enforcing the policies and for that we implement another function in PGW which is referred as PCEF policy charge policy and charging enforcement function. So PCRF typically manages two things one is quality of service and another one is the charging mechanism. So all these interfaces so SGW and PGW are connected to each other by using S5 and S8 interface and connects to PCRF via S7 interface and also referred as GX interface. In the upcoming videos, we are going to talk about all these interfaces one by one and we will also talk about the protocol architecture on all these interfaces. 
Thank you very much. I hope this video gives you a good idea about LTPC network architecture. In the upcoming videos, we are going to break down each and every network functions and going to talk about all these things pretty much in detail. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.